All right, guys, so we got our tires off the ground. Um, doesn't have to be a lot. We're spinning. Uh, nothing fancy here. Safety first. We never breach our limbs or put anything underneath that we wouldn't want to lose. But that being said, everything is six ton rated here. Um, that block is on the concrete. Six ton jack. This block is on the ground with an extra six ton jack. We used the back block with a standard jack that slid on it. So it didn't pull either way. Lifted it up. Got a jack stand under it. This one's just adjusted here. This is just a backup jack stand. And we pretty much did the same thing um, on the other side. So all we did here is the same thing. This is where we ended. We did the jacks here. We lifted this side up. Then we got the jack stand underneath it. Jack. We got another jack, um, old house jack here underneath it. Uh, there's really no pressure on it, just as a backup. I'm gonna put another one on the other side yet on each side of these wheels just to make sure we're secured and we've got the jack ready to go in case we need it and we may have to lift on the axle just a little bit this one's still a little tight uh, but the backs are free to go and we're gonna get these tires off take them to my tire guy and my guy put new tires on them you ask why aren't we just letting the tire guy handle all this because we are going to check the bearings. That's our thing. We're going to check the bearings and repack them while the tires are off. We'll kill two birds with one stone here. <laughs> tires off. Uh, we make sure they're free and clear because the frame is off the ground. All right and what we're going to do is take our impact uh, 19 millimeter okay there's a fancy socket so don't scratch the rim uh, you don't have to have one of those and there ain't much to it I'm sure most of you are aware it helps if you loosen these ahead of time which I did um, that way they don't fight you and spin because we're now off the ground but uh, we're just going to take our lug nuts off. Pretty simple. So just a couple quick facts. Um, you can see our hub here. We got it off. Um, inside that cap, you see there's a little plastic piece in there. That plastic piece is designed to pop out with the tires still on it. Okay. So that chrome piece is plastic. It's designed to pop out. Okay. And behind there is your bearing buddy or where you would grease it. And if you pop this out and you could do this while the tire's on, all right? And there's your Zerk fitting to grease. Over greasing this is a big deal. It gets into the brakes, it can cost you big money. So make sure you know what you're doing. Too much grease is no good. But I just wanted to show you that uh, while we're at this step. Now remember, we're doing the tires, but while we're here, um, it's, we haven't checked the bearings in two years. So um, we're gonna do the full bearing check repack them see if they need to be replaced and see where we're at we're just going to continue what we did here for the next four tires and we'll have this completed i just wanted to show you though that if you remove this plastic cap right here okay and then you can come in here pop this out it's a pain in the butt but that's how you can grease them just so you're aware you don't over grease we'll talk about what kind of grease later on and um we'll share that information with you all right, once we got our tires off, like we do, um, the, the chrome piece just slides out, just falls uh, right through the center. It comes out through um, the back side here. You can, pull it, you can pull it right out. I set them off to the side. I got my lug nuts underneath it so I don't lose them. Sometimes I'll put them inside of it. It's supposed to rain, so I'm just doing that for now. Of course, it had to be the last tire. Uh, we had wheel studs stripped out from the factory with the lug nuts. Uh, thank God this didn't happen roadside. And we were able to do this at a controlled climate here in the shop or at the shop and had tools to do this. 
Um, we'll talk more about this mess. Um, it happened. I'm glad it happened here. This is a three-part video. So if you're asking why the camper is completely jacked up on the frame to do wheel bearings, you wouldn't necessarily have to do that. If you're going to use a single jack and do each wheel bearing at a time, never jack in the center of the axle. Always jack on the outside of it where the shackle or the suspension is. This is a three video. We're doing wheels, tires, the China bombs off of it. We're doing the Alltrek 4000s by More Ride suspension upgrade. And we're doing the wheel bearings. So make sure you check out those other videos also, guys. Uh, that's why it's jacked up on its frame. So if you're not sure what happened here, we got to the last tire. And I noticed one lug nut before it, which I showed you here, uh, came off really hard. And I thought maybe the battery was dying. And I realized the battery was fully charged. The last lug nut I got to, whoever ran this on at the factory, they stripped it right out. You could see the thread stripped. It was so bad that it's the spines inside stripped out and this bolt was just spinning in there. So now you got yourself in a position. We were able to cut the lug nut off to get it out. More than likely, I'm going to have to replace this whole piece now over this. Um, thank God this didn't happen with a flat tire or those China bombs roadside. Because if you were trying to put your spare on this one here roadside, it would have never have happened. You would have had big problems on the side of the road. So I'm really glad we got into this. Um, even though it's caused grief here in the last tire, but here we are If you're really looking at this uh, Breakup what we're seeing here is multiple stripped out studs Take off the drum, You got to pop the dust cover so nice and easy with a pair of channel locks You can do also do it with a screwdriver and a hammer. You just got to make sure that you don't dent the ring so just I don't put any pressure I just Get it to pop Just like that no pressure, no dents, no nothing. Good to go. Take the cutter key out. Use a pair of side cutters. Other people call them dikes, um, diagonal cutters, whatever you want to call them. Pull your cutter key, set it off to the side. Pull the lock nut. Set that off to the side. Pop your drum so that you can get to the outer bearing and take that off. And then you can pull your drum assembly. At this point, clean off the shaft and then we can go ahead and pull the seal to access the inner bearing. Okay, so. Let's talk about over-greasing over a little bit. This grease fitting right here is called a bearing buddy. Two to three pumps is all you want to put in, and you don't want to do it every trip. If you over-grease these brakes, it is going to, by the time you see grease come out the front side, like most people like to see, you've already greased your brakes on the back side, and the brakes are not going to work properly. You're going to see grease all over the place. And actually, you can see in this drum, this right here is grease. Okay, so the seal failed. Um, and there's not, there's no signs of over greasing here. It's just this thing heated up and the seal failed, allowing the grease to get to the magnet. You can see it on the magnet right here. Okay, that's a bad thing. When that happens, get yourself some brake cleaner and spray off the magnets, spray the drum, clean everything off really good. And then go ahead and repack your wheel bearings, replace your seal, and uh, you're good to go. seal pull in the seal just be careful you don't get any grease on the surface where the magnet rides and we're not going to reuse any seals no you replace the seals when you pull them you cannot reuse them they are not reusable seals okay so we'll go ahead and we'll pull the bearing out set that off to the side for now we're going to clean the grease out of the drum 
and then we're going to clean the grease off of the magnet surface and then the magnet itself. So first thing we're going to do while we're right here, we're going to clean off the magnet and just spray all the brake dust off the, the shoes. So you see how that magnet's coming nice and clean again? All you got to do is just wipe it. And we're getting all that grease and everything right off of there. And for the record, this is the only one that was like this. It may take a couple times just to get just so that you're comfortable with all the grease off of it. Just remember the worse it's caked, the longer it takes. This wasn't bad, we caught it early. And there we go, that's all nice and clean now. Now we're just going to spray the brake shoes and backing plate assembly just to get all the brake dust off and if there was any residual grease that did fly around we're just going to spray all that right off and there you go it's like brand new again okay now we're going to clean the inside of the drum out so this here just take your brake clean spray all the way around And then take your paper towel and wipe it out. Now that's all just break dust. The inside around where your bearing rides. And you see we're going to have to spray it again because you can still see the residual on there. Like I said, it might take a couple times. There we go. That's what we want to see. Nice and clean. We're nice, clean, shiny all the way across. Now we can repack our bearings and put them in. And that's all there is to it. See how I try to get as much grease out of this thing as I can? Yep. You're just wiping all the grease out. Yeah, I'm just getting all the grease out of the top up bearing here. And that way when I put it in a bearing packer, I don't have a whole lot to wipe off. You know, that nasty, dirty grease.
coating of grease on the inside of the drum. Now we can put our bearing and seal on. So that's done. Uh, make sure you clean off the axle shaft. Get all that old grease off. There we go. Okay. Now we can slide the drum on. out all the old grease out of the drum on the front side as well and then clean your bearing and everything on the outside and repack that as much grease out of the bearing as possible so that way you don't have much to clean when you put the new grease in. Getting all that dirty grease out. Bearings all cleaned up, we can repack. Make sure it comes out all the way around. Wipe off the excess. Your bearing is packed, and now you can install washer on, put your nut on, tighten it down, back it off a quarter turn once it's completely tight, and install the cotter key and the dust cap. If there's any grease in your dust cap, just wipe that out. Nice clean surfaces. You don't got to worry about that old grease in there. Just like that. And then just pop that back on. Work your way all the way around so you're not denting it. And there you go. Proper procedure for repacking wheel bearings. How electric brakes actually work while we're here.
So when you're driving, your wheel's turning. When you hit the brake, this is a magnet. It turns the magnet on and it grabs the face of this drum in here. And when it grabs, it pulls forward and pushes your brakes out. Only one's moving because the drum's not on it, so it's not pushing against the other one. But as the magnet grabs, it pulls. And the higher you have your brake controller turned up in your vehicle, the stronger that that magnet jerks to turn your brakes on. Very cool. Just showing you how that works. All right, guys, we're just going to speed this video up. Uh, we call it Mass RV, the way it looks now. Uh, take your time. Do it right. Be safe. Uh, make sure you uh, properly clean the bearings, check the bearings, have bearings on hand. We have bearings on hand, new dust covers on hand, just in case we damaged anything. At least one complete set. Uh, that way, if we ran into a problem, obviously the goal would be to replace the bearings. You don't have to have a bearing packer. It's uh, definitely convenient to have and can make life easier. Uh, you can roll the grease in them by hand. Over-greasing is the number one problem on these hubs. Don't over-grease. You'll see in this video how we did it. Um, you know, we will put a little grease in that shaft, but not a lot. And you want to be careful with those bearing buddies. You could cause a lot of damage quick. If you're not comfortable doing it, take it to a professional. Um, otherwise, you can do it yourself and save a lot of money because it's not rocket science. You saw that last tire in the video, how we had issues uh, with the studs. They were stripped out from the factory, probably built on a Friday, over-tightened. Um, we fixed it. We put a Dexter hub on it instead of a Lippert. No big deal. Make sure you retorque your wheels to the manufacturer specifications on the torque spec. And until we meet again, guys, Nate out here at Rebel Liners, please hit subscribe. Subscribe really helps the channel. Thanks, guys.